Hi, I'm attorney Ramsey Barawi, and this is Your Money, Your Life. In this segment, we will discuss a system which assures that your personal, financial, legal, medical, and property documents are immediately available to you. Joining me in this discussion is Mark Gibson, the president and co-owner of award-winning Life in Case, LLC. He's a member of the National Association of Professional Organizers. As such, Mark works extensively with professional organizers who are assisting clients to consolidate and organize all of their important documents and information in one place. Mark, welcome to Your Money, Your Life. It's great to have you on the program. My pleasure. Now, you are the co-founder of Life in Case, LLC. Now, there's got to be a background story. How did you come up with the idea? Well, this, of course, this, my partner is Diane Hoyle Moran, and she has her side of it, and I have mine. Okay. Um, when I was young, I worked with my father on a, a program, let's say the, the beta of this, and it was um, very crude, done with envelopes, and nicely printed, but anyway, we came across it one time, um, just going over some of my work, and she saw the original project. She said, it's a great idea. Her father had died suddenly of brain aneurysm. Oh, my gosh. And he's in the Navy, and he kept everything in all his file cabinets, and he was very thorough and didn't throw a thing away. When it came down to it, they couldn't even find his will. He collected so many things, and they wow. were so overwhelmed wow. with paperwork that they never actually got back to the original important documents. So between what we, what my father and I had originally done and doing the research and development on all of the different um, realms, and you know, using the government guidelines and mm -hmm. the attorneys and the mm -hmm. state planners and things, we came up with a pretty simplified system. Um, we're using five file folders and um, 10 recommended documents in each file folder. And so it becomes simple and easy and clean. It becomes almost like a um, scavenger hunt. Wh when did you start the process of opening the business? We're probably in our seventh year now. It probably took three, almost four years um, doing the, the prototype and the research and the things like that. And then you had to do the prototype development mm -hmm. and then redevelop mm -hmm. it. And it's never easy to come up with a nice, simple, clean concept like this from the start. Mm -hmm. So lots of starts and stops. Sure. Sure, T it takes time to really fine tune it and get it right. Yeah, when I was, I was talking to a young lady and she said, well, you've been doing this for seven years, so think of it as a seven-year-old taught. Mm -hmm. And after seven years, they've started to know some things, but right. we haven't fully developed, you know, still working on it. Now, you, you, you don't have a background really in um, running this type of business. So let me ask you, what, what gave you and your partner the confidence, the courage to say, you know, we're going to go for it? I've actually been an, an entrepreneur all my life mm -hmm. and developed a lot of other products and I've held patents and uh, something called Medical Medallion and My Voice ID, mm -hmm. which work in the medical field, um, creating and um, recording. So it's pre recorded information on your medical history mm -hmm. and using some USB technology and things like that. Difficult thing to do. So I've, I've worked in this field and in other creating products pretty much. My father did it before I did, and I've grown up doing it. So it doesn't take that much courage for me to start a new company. Okay. But Diane, on the other hand, mm -hmm. from some company, although she owns a, um, she started a uh, marketing firm. So she does all web design and okay. um, branding and things like that. So between us, we've done other things, and we worked on this together and said it seems like a good idea. Now, earlier you said, you know, life in case is, is basically a case. And I'll, I'll lift it up here. It's, it looks something like this. And it has folders. You say it's a relatively simple product. Um, tell me, why should any of our viewers consider life in case? Why do they need this? Well, we've, it goes for a myriad of reasons. Let, let's start with, with the simplest would be you're moving. Now you've got to organize all your documents. You might have them in your file cabinets. You might. A lot of times people really do know where their documents are, mm -hmm. but their spouse, their family, no one else does. Mm -hmm. So now you've got to find it. And if you are incapacitated, someone else has got to try to locate it. Um, with moving and downsizing and things like that, you know, assisted living people that are going into all of those fields, um, or you know, lifestyle changes, it be, it becomes an ob obvious solution. You can 
bring your documents with you. Right. You know where they are, you know what you have. You can leave them in your file cabinets and let the movers move them, or you can take charge and have it yourself. A secondary, um, a secondary reason would be if you're in any kind of the, a um, danger zone, mm -hmm. either for flooding mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. Southern California we saw a lot because they have earthquakes and they have mm -hmm. fires and they have floods and mudslides and things. So from an evacuation standpoint, it becomes real easy to grab it and go. It's very lightweight. It's very easy. Holds about 500 sheets of, mm -hmm. um, of paper. So pretty much all the documents you need. It's not a file cabinet, so it's not something that you're going to put 10 years of your uh, income tax returns in. You want to put just your vital documents, right, just the right, things that you're going right. to need pretty much on a daily basis or weekly or monthly, you know. Okay. So you, you, you mentioned the fact that somebody who's downsizing could use something like this because they have easy access to their documents. You also mentioned somebody who's in an emergency situation. They've got their documents. Think Katrina, for example. Sure. Right? Or California. Sandy. Sandy in New Jersey, right? Absolutely. Now, what about somebody who habitually travels? You know, here in the Northeast, we have a lot of snowbirds. You know, they, they head down to Florida. They head to Arizona. They, they could use something like this, couldn't they? Absolutely. Um, you can leave your documents behind, but if you have a medical emergency and you don't have your medical stuff with you, now they, you know, you can try to get it through the hospital up here and, and you know, send it down with you, or you can have your information with you. Passports and things like that, you really need the hard copy. Right. You need to travel with it, and you want it with you. We're also working with the RV industry because mm -hmm. that's, a, again, very travel-oriented, and they don't um, have a lot of space. Right. So this becomes a nice, easy sure. solution. Okay, well let's let's take a look at what we've got here. Again, you know, the, this is this is the the life in case. This is what it looks like. It's not very thick, and and then you say there are these folders that go inside. So let's look at each folder one at a time, and we'll start with this one, which is marked. It's first of all, it's made of some sort of a, a plastic, right? Yep. And it's clear, and it's marked personal. So tell me a little bit about what kind of documents would go into a personal folder. Well, again, these are our recommended documents, and again, we've, we've gone to the government line, guidelines and things like that. So um, I'm just going to read through the list. You know, your, your birth certificate, mm -hmm. you, you need a copy of your passport, mm -hmm. um, citizenship papers, mm -hmm. um, if you've got a green card or, or that kind of things. I mean, your, mar your marriage license and probably your divorce decree. Okay. Um, if you're adopting, you, you want your diplomas inside here. So this is really all your personal information, your social security card, your uh, military documents, mm -hmm. any kind of transcripts. Okay, so the, these, these are important personal types of documents. Absolutely. And then, uh, so that our viewers understand, then you have actually written on the cover uh, a suggested list of documents with a little box, and I'm, I'm assuming that's a checkoff box. Absolutely. So it's just a checklist. Again, back to that um, scavenger hunt thing. As right. you find, as you as you're coming across things, you you put them in. You know where to put them now. Right. You know where to find them. And as you check them off, you know what's in each file. And if you've got it checked off, and if you take a look at this, you can say, Oh yeah, that's in there. Oh gee, no, that's not in there. Let me go find it. And right? especially if you're a financial planner, or you're or you're a um, you know organizer or things like that, mm -hmm. you know which ones to look for. And, and as you come across them, you know where to put them and you know where they'll be. Right. And you can recommend, you know, I, I don't see these documents here. Do you have them? Do you not have them? Right. Right. Okay. Now let's take a look at, at the next folder. And the next folder is marked financial. So tell me what kind of financial documents are you recommending go course, in this folder? Of course, this is more your area of expertise. but um, so. You know, the most obvious is your income tax returns and, you know, if you have property tax records, make sure that your property taxes are up to par. Um, any kind of employment information. You want copies of your stocks, your bonds, your savings accounts, other securities, because mm -hmm. you know if you can't find them, the state can keep them. Mm -hmm. um, bank account, savings certificates, any of the IRAs, list of pensions, credit cards, um, credit card payment, you know, credit payments and account mm -hmm. statements. Um, a lot of these things, as a financial planner, you probably have in your office and may not fit in here. Um, so you may just actually be putting the individual's name that has the information, especially if it's an attorney, and you're looking at your, you know, as we go to different ones, right, right. you know, your, um, your will and things like that as we get into the estate section. 
Okay, so that's what you recommend. And again, like the personal, you've got the list right right on the folder, and people can check off what they've inserted in there so they know exactly what's in this folder. Right, and, and as a financial planner, you can go over them, you can say, where are these, or there's a weakness here, you don't have insurance for this, or so, so you can help fill in the blanks too. Mark, I'm not a financial planner, I'm an estate planning lawyer. Oh, what do I know? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Sorry. That's all right. Um, if somebody wants to insert a document that's not on your suggested list, they can still do that, and they can modify oh, this, this checklist, right? Oh, of course. Okay. And you, yeah, you can you can certainly write on it with a sharpie sure. and, and check it off. Perfect. In fact, I have my. I don't use checks much anymore because most everything is done electronically right. and, and through right. the bank. But um, I still need my checkbook, and once in a while, you have to do it. So I actually throw my checkbook in mine too, so okay. I know where it is. And, and on those once or twice a month that I need to write out a check, I know where my checkbook is, and that's not as in this. Now the, the third folder is marked property. What kind of property are we talking about and what kind of documents would go in this folder? So we're looking at, um, so, so real property, you know, your deeds, your mm -hmm. titles, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. your real estate things, um, any of your motor vehicle titles, um, recreational vehicles, your boats, your campers, your, if you have ski mobiles. Um, you also want to know where your existing mortgages and loans are and any mm -hmm. lien documents against your property. Sure, sure. Um, tax assessment notices, you know, um, capital improvements so that, you know, you can deduct that as you sell sure, the property. Sure. An inventory of And again, jewelry. you have to have records to take that deduction, so it's no, important. Yeah. Exactly. And inventory of jewelry and val valuable items. Mm -hmm. Again, if they get stolen or lost and you don't have the documentation, you're going to have as much of a problem with insurance as sure. this. Oh, and look, you probably want your insurance policy and your agent information right. for your home and for your auto and vehicles. Okay. So that's that's property. The the next the fourth folder, I should say, is medical. And um, what kind of documents are you proposing should go in the medical folder? So, on on the top of the list, it'd be you know whom to notify in case of emergency, and then mm -hmm. of course your doctors and your hospitals. Right contact information because mm -hmm. those are the people that are going to know most about your medical history. If you have medical history, throw that in here. Throw as much as much documentation as and you can. Um, your health insurance, your Medicaid, your Medicare information, um, veterans benefits if you're a veteran, mm -hmm. um, copy of advanced directives so sure. people will do the right thing for what you want and of course your religious affiliations. Do you believe it may also be important to in include on, on this list uh, a list of medications that people are taking Absolutely. And, and put that in here? Sure. Uh, th the problem with a lot of those things is people change their medications a lot. Sure. So it's hard to stay up to date with what your current medication list is mm -hmm. against, you know, when you changed it last week or the right, week before right. and clashing medications. So it's, so it's important, but you don't want it to, to you know, if okay. you don't keep it updated all the time. True. No, you know you're very right. But the thing is, I, I I know from my own personal experience dealing with my primary care physician, he's always asking me for my list of medications. You know, oh, absolutely. Constantly and, asking. And a lot of times they'll come in with the whole bottles and the things. Right. like, Well, I was taking this last week. Is this the one I was supposed to take? <laughs> That's yeah, right. Exactly. So, so I, you can see where it can get really complicated, yeah. and, and medications can be conflicting, and right. you know all kinds of interesting side effects of things. And then the last folder you have is marked estate. And what kind of estate documents are you recommending go into this folder? So we're going we're to talk to, you know, your first person in your estate is going to be your attorney. So have your attorney's contact information. And then, of course, your will and any trust that you have set up, mm -hmm. um, life insurance policies. And again, you want the agent contact information. Right. So you right. may not want to put the original in. Or you may, depending on if you're bringing it with you, you may want the right. original or you may want to put it in a safety deposit box or somewhere else. But you still want to know that your attorney has a copy of it right. and what's going on with that. Your executor, you know, you want to, you want to name an executor. Um, again, personal property, if it's not covered in the will, do you want to put a list of things in? These may and may not be um, provided for, but at least you, it's what you right. feel. You know, they have, they have a goal to go by. Um, Name of your funeral director if you have um, pre, you know, right. if you pre-contact, pre-planning mm -hmm. information. Um, if you have a burial plot or deed and location of it where you want to be buried, living living memory, ethical will, mm -hmm. things to be shared with your loved ones, and of course military honors, veterans, death benefits, things right. like that. You know, the hot hot topic in, in estate planning now is uh, digital assets. 
know, people have a password to get into their bank account, let's say, online. They've got a password to get into Facebook. They've got a password to get on, you know, various different uh, social media. Mm. Somebody passes away. They haven't passed that information on. Facebook is not going to let somebody else. No one gets the information, exactly. They're not going to let them get at it. So, you know, I, I bring that up because you have, you know, information that should go to others. That should be in here that's as not, part of the information going to others. Yeah, that, 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 you know, you know, of course, putting your passwords in kind of a public location is always a little nerve-wracking, but you'd much rather have it than not. Right, absolutely. And you've got a major problem if, if the unfortunate happens and now no one can get at your digital assets. You're stuck unless you go to court and get a court order. That can be expensive. And very time-consuming. Absolutely. So nothing's yeah. going to be done in a timely manner at that yeah. point. Yeah. yeah so, that makes sense. So, I mean, we're always tweaking and updating. Right. And, and we certainly allow you to do that. We, we were talking a little bit about we, we don't have a file for pets, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are concerned about that. We've had some requests to put yeah. in another file for pets, and also um, some of the, the uh, military, active military people right. have a whole lot of documents that we can put another file in for that group. Another hot topic in estate planning is pets now, and um, the governor, uh, the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, not too long ago, earlier this year, signed uh, into law the ability to now write pet trusts. It's a big deal. When a governor signs a bill, it's a big deal. So they actually put funds away to make sure the pets that, care what, what, what the, the rest what of the pet trust does is it, it sets up a trustee, who's now going to be responsible for making sure the pets properly taken care of, and then the, the, the person establishing the trust, who's called the donor or the grantor, funds that trust with a certain amount of money, and the trustee handles that amount of money to make sure that the pet's taken care of. Especially if you have parrots and things like that that last for 100 years. <laughs> there's some serious, there's some per per perpetuity thing going yeah. on, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, that's another hot topic, is, is pets. Yeah. And, yeah, and again, it's a, it's a good idea to have a phone. Yeah, we haven't gotten, you know, yeah. everything evolves. Before we started the program, you mentioned something about life in case introducing cloud storage. T well, tell us about that. We've had a lot of people requesting cloud-based um, information and things. So we we partnered with a uh, with a company, Mobile Logic, mm -hmm. that um, that does secure cloud-based stuff. So you know, because you don't want to put Dropbox or things like that that are too open sourced. So so there's other people that. So we partner with these groups so that they can. Um, so if you want to also scan all your documents or take a picture of them and put them in the cloud so that you can do it in a secure environment. Um, again, we mostly deal with real hard copy products because, again, if you have your passport and you're trying to take your digital scan to get through customs, mm -hmm. the odds aren't good. No, they aren't. And if you're going to sell your house, you really need your deed or your car yes, or yes, things you like do. that. Yes, they don't, you do. Yeah, the, the digital version may or may not be as... Uh, but, but it, it's it's certainly a way for people to be able to to store stuff. Again, it's it's not as accessible as having the case that they can easily take with them wherever they go. But again, cloud-based, they can go. You can put your ten years of your tax returns on there and not right. have to have that's the things right. like that. So, right. so as a backup system and as a system to get rid of a lot of the paper that you're putting in all your file cabinets and things like that, cloud-based storage solutions. Right. Makes well, sense. The, the downside to the cloud, of course, is if the server fails, then you, you may not be able to get at well, your you assets. you don't have your password. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have your password. That's right. We just talked about that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, obviously, a person has to sit down and spend some time putting the documents into these folders. Uh, and let's let's deal with a hypothetical for a minute. Let's say there's, you know, John, John Jones purchases this product fills the five folders with whatever documents he currently has. He acquires some more documents somewhere down the road, sticks them in the, the old shoebox, never puts them in this folder. Is, is there some way where the, the individual can sort of be encouraged to keep up with the filing? It, it's really funny. It's when you come across a document, you don't know. We, we work with um, the National Association of Professional Organizers, right. and I was at a, a seminar with one of the girls, with a lot of them, and one of my questions was, well, what do you do when you find an important document for your client? Mm -hmm. And uh, her answer was, well, I put it in a file folder, and I make up a really good name, 
and then I stick it in the file folder, and then when the woman asked, I really couldn't remember what the name of the file was, but it's in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of putting it into your shoebox, right. to, to just go through the list and say, oh, this belongs in here. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not in the list, if it's something important, do you throw it in? Right, right. You know, it, it, we, we talked a little bit earlier um, before the show started about the fact that, in fact, you brought it up, that it's not every family needs a life in case. It's right. pretty much every individual. Right. So, so basically what you're saying is that if there's a family of, let's say, mom, dad, and two children, then they ought to have four cases, Absolutely. one for each person. In fact, we're working with a, uh, a labeling company to, to put a label on each one of these so that, yes, mine, I actually have a label on mine that says, you know, says my name on mm -hmm, it. And mm -hmm. Diane has hers and everyone, because especially the original is one color, so they, unless you grab a few different colors of it, you don't know whose is whose, so labeling it becomes a, a dental label is an interesting company that they bring them on and off. You went to a convention this, this past spring, early did. summer. Okay. Tell us a little bit about what convention that was and what happened. Again, it was the National Association of Professional Organizers, and they, their job again is to bring people in and they, they, they help downsize and they help and they work with hoarders and they work with all kinds of different groups. There's a wide variety of, of, of these professional organizers. Um, and they got together and they um, they voted our product the best product for best solution for organizing information at home. Excellent. Excellent. So it's quite the prestigious a little award, especially by industry peers. Mm -hmm. So these people understand it, it's easy to sell a product to people that understand it. Right, right. That's what they do every day is to try to organize people, okay. including themselves. They usually buy it for their mom first because mm -hmm. they organize their mom, then they right, feel better, right, right. and then they realize and then they, they come back with, oh, it's simple and easy and clean. As a result of the, the award you've received, have you had increased sales? We did. We sold out pretty quickly, um, not quite anticipating the, the bounce that we would get, mm -hmm. especially for, for winning the award and also for um, for the exposure. A lot of the uh, professional organizers have become affiliates of ours, so they actually, we sell it to them at a reduced mm -hmm. price and then they resell it to their I clients see, or see. they or they use it as part of their package to organize their people. So um, so we've been getting a lot of individuals helping us sell the products mm -hmm. and a lot of companies. And um, yeah, real nice bounce. So we've had to, we've actually had a little lull, not in sales, but in being able to mail product because we've had to wait to, to reestablish our inventory. Manufactured just shipped this week, so we mm -hmm. should have product by the end of the week. Other than the National Association of Professional Organizers, do you have any other affiliates? Well, the, I mean, directly related to them is, is NASA, which is national. Is a um, they do the senior move managers, mm -hmm. National Association of Senior Move Managers. So this, they specifically move seniors into downsizing and into assisted living and things like that. Um, we've been working again within the RV industry because it's a small. Um, you're inside a small unit mm -hmm. with very limited storage space. So our product, again, you're traveling with you. Um, and I think you brought up earlier the snowbirds that, you know, the, the people that are going in, coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traveling, you yeah. know, four or six months out of the year, and keeping their important documents with them instead of leaving in one house or the other. Would you consider having financial planners and, and, and estate planning lawyers as affiliates? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, we, and we, we've sold to quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. We also have a program where we can um, we can private label it if we have large enough quantities. So on the mm -hmm. back of each life in case would be a, uh, instead of life in case, it could be, um, you know, your, your firm mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. whatever company, you know, either the uh, New York Life or any of the big um, financial institutions could actually do things like that. But we're still working with those. Right, 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 right. So all, all still in the infancy. The process is in it, its infancy. We, we have to continue to grow, absolutely. There you go. Okay. So wh what are your goals? What's what's the future hold for Life in Case? Well, we'd, um, you know, we, we've gotten interest from staples and, and groups like that. That's not something you're, you're ready to consider at this time because you feel it's not a well, en well enough known product. I think if we got the right partnership with someone like Staples and they wanted to they wanted to put their name in the branding mm -hmm. and use mm -hmm. their colors and things like that, and they wanted to help promote the product, absolutely. So then, basically, will you be going to, to the NAPO convention again next year? Okay. NAPO next year is in um, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and we certainly hope to be there. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think we've already, we've already got space planned. 
Um, yeah, it's a real nice venue for us. Of course, we've got to expand past that because you know the, it, it's a large organization, but we also have to you know branch out into other areas. Now, what I meant by NAPO, which is for the benefit of our viewers, is National Association of Professional Organizers. Right, those minor right. details. Right. Plan to go to any other conventions, any any other sort of marketing activities. NASA, the National Association of um, Senior Move Managers, just invited us to join mm -hmm. again. So, what what would you like our viewers to take away from from this interview? What what would you like them to know about Life in Case? I think that it's a simple, easy, clean solution to knowing where your documents are and where the rest of your family mm -hmm. can find your documents. Um, I was talking to Diane, my partner, and her son went away to college. And he um, had all his financial papers in there. He had his driver's license, his social security card. He had, his, he had his insurance documents. He was actually organized. And this is an 18-year-old, completely disorganized kid. You would never give him that information. He'd stick it in his pocket and wash it. <laughs> but, because, but because of life in case, it's big enough, it's hard to lose, it's pretty indestructible. Um, he actually took it to school with him and used it and has, still has all the information. Excellent. So even an 18-year-old boy can do this. So that, that's pretty good credibility. Good place for us to stop. There are many good reasons to have a plan for keeping track of your important papers. For example, you'll need quick access to certain types of documents when meeting with a CPA, financial advisor, or an attorney. If you're the victim of a fire, flood, or a serious illness, you'll need to find essential documents without delay. And of course, if you travel, it's critical that your documents are both portable and easily accessible. Having quick, easy, and stress-free access to your important documents requires user-friendly organizational system. It is for that very reason that Mark Gibson and his partner created Life in Case as an inexpensive solution to help you organize, maintain, and secure all of your personal, medical, and financial information in one place. But that's not all. Life in Case also offers a convenient checklist of 50 essential documents for storage in five easily recognizable categories. In that way, Life in Case eliminates guesswork while assuring the ease of organization. Put another way, Life in Case minimizes the stress associated with independently organizing and managing your important documents. And it does all of this in a 500 sheet capacity grab and go tote, a tote that is small enough to easily store or carry with you, but still large enough to hold all your essential documents. In other words, your information is literally right at your fingertips. Therefore, to effectively organize your documents, Visit lifeincase.com and learn how this award-winning product can help you. In closing, I'd like to thank my guest, Mark Gibson. Mark, thank you for thank appearing you, on the program. And as always, thank you to you, our viewers, for watching Your Money, Your Life. My name is Ramsey Barawi, Building Your Trust.